Hi folks, just a brief video in response to a question that came up on the user forums uh, from Captain Obvious, who uploaded this little uh, example scene of a clock rig. And here's, here's the problem. So um, you can see here, he's got it rigged very nicely so that you can, uh, this slider will control the hour hand, you can control the minute hand, for example. Um, and these are being, the, the, the different hands of the clock are being manipulated through this locator whose translations are being passed by way of this influence and then the influence of course is affecting the mesh um, so that these become deformations in Modo's deformer stack for the different um, hands of the clock. The problem comes when he wants to move the whole clock mesh in the scene and translate it, watch what happens as we translate this. You can see it sort of all uh, blows apart. So if you apply any kind of uh, translation, you get very um, strange, unpredictable results. So the general rule of thumb that I follow with my own rigging is that as soon as you're influencing a mesh by means of deformation, then you should only be animating it by means of deformation. So it means that if you have a character that you have rigged and bound, you don't want to then start doing any animation directly on the mesh items of that character, only indirectly by means of rigging and deformation. So for this case, uh, how you would work around that is, um, let's go ahead and add a locator. And we'll call this locator uh, clock mover. So this is going to be what we're going to translate to move the entire clock around in the scene. Then we're going to go ahead and add a uh, general influence. And as well, we're going to create down here uh, a new weight container. So um, let's go ahead and say for this weight uh, container, we want to add all the vertices that comprise the clock mesh. So we'll say add those points to the weight container. And then we just have to rig it up. So I'll come down here into the schematic. We'll bring our weight container. We'll bring the clock's mover locator. Under the deformation, we'll bring in our general influence. So the clock movers translations are going to be what we send into here. And then the geometry is going to be through the weight container. So here we can say, no, we don't want the entire mesh. We want this through a weight map, which is actually a weight container. OK, so the nice thing with this is now uh, the translation of our whole clock mesh um, is part of the deformation order. And in Moto, the deformations are evaluated from bottom to top. So in this case, um, the translations of the second hand, the minute hand, the hour hand, those deformations will happen before the, the moving of the entire clock um, being translated around inside the scene. And that can be very useful for some of your rigging to uh, control the order of operation in which the deformations fire and it can solve some problems. So let's come back here and say, all right, um, now if we wanted to go ahead and move the clock around the scene, we would select the clock mover. And as we translate it, now you can see it doesn't blow apart anymore. We can uh, do all of our animation like rotation on it. Um, you know, we can even scale it down a little bit. And our rigging is still preserved for the for the hand. So you can see we can move the hour hand, we can move the minute hand. Another advantage with uh, using weight containers is that if you were to use weight containers for all the components of the clock, it allows you to abstract your rigging so that you would then be able to apply that rig uh, into another scene with a different clock, completely different clock mesh, then just dump the vertices for the different parts into the various weight containers and you can preserve your rigging. A lot of questions have come up on the forums about double transform problems that um, happen uh, with 
for example, characters. And I think a lot of times this is part of the source because what will happen is people will parent their mesh into the, the hierarchy of joints. And then because it's part of the parented hierarchy, as, that, as the different joints move, it's performing a transform on the mesh itself. And then in addition to that, you have a deformation happening from the bind. So that creates a double transform and will create issues. This way, if you don't ever do any animation on your mesh, you keep it separated and only do animation um, through your rigging and deformation, you can avoid those type of uh, uh, double transformation issues. So anyway, uh, hopefully this was helpful and uh, thanks for watching.